Hello, my name is Dalen, and I am a florist based out of Washington, D.C. I'm very excited to join with my friends at Mayesh and the Design Star program to shine a little bit of light on what it's like to be a professional floral freelancer. I think that being a professional freelancer is one of the best ways to get started in the industry because it gives you the opportunity to learn from so many varieties of different designers, which just gives you a really well-rounded floral education. Um, I think one of the beautiful things about what we do is that floristry is a craft, so it's passed down from project to project, um, and we all are kind of students of flowers no matter what stage of the game that we're in. And so I hope that I can utilize this platform to make it a little bit easier for anybody that's interested in starting their journey with flowers um, to navigate the waters of being a professional freelancer. I think we should start with the definition of a freelancer, which is an individual who earns money on a per job or per task basis, usually for short term work. The IRS categorizes freelancers as self-employed, and unlike an employee of a company, a freelancer does not have their taxes withheld. Freelancers should know that one third of your salary will be due at tax time. There are a lot of ways to keep track of your expenses. I personally set up two bank accounts, one to transfer my earnings into, and another to keep track of all of my taxes owed. That way you can pay yourself from your earnings, but also have all of the money saved away for when tax season comes around. One other thing to note is that freelancers are also responsible for their own health care which can be a little bit difficult to navigate at times, but through the Affordable Care Act, there's a lot of good healthcare options and also some freelance guilds that offer some guidance when you're setting up your own personal healthcare. Let's talk about contracts. They can be a little bit intimidating, sure. I think it's important to do your research and read through contracts very thoroughly. If it's something that you might not understand, take it to a law professional and make sure that anything that you sign, you feel 100% comfortable. It's not just talent that defines a good freelancer. Being adaptable, taking feedback, and just generally being a pleasure to work with get you booked on jobs time and time again. Every company's definition of what they imagine a freelancer is will differ slightly, but a freelance designer is hired because you will be an asset to a team in executing a very specific vision. For this reason, I think it's very important to obtain as much information as possible to ensure you are well equipped to execute the design in the job ahead. Being a freelance designer is hard work. It takes a toll on your body and often requires very long days. Setting boundaries around compensation, expectations, and workload from the start will set you up for success on all jobs that you book. Remember, every job you take will be a learning experience that only adds to your value and your knowledge moving forward. Setting your freelance rate is based on a lot of different factors, including your on-site job responsibilities and what the length of the workday looks like. It's also important to always get email confirmation of the dates that the company would like to book with you, so it's easy to reference anytime that you need it. Other questions to ask would be, are meals provided on site? Will you be responsible for your own transportation, or will you be traveling in the employer's vehicles? I think one of the best pieces of advice that I ever received was to be really selective with booking your jobs really far in advance because it can really limit you during the event season to jobs that you maybe will align with a little bit more creatively. When on the event site, get clarification from the lead designer before beginning any work. Seems obvious, I know, but getting clear instructions, or better yet, a visual example of what the studio is trying to achieve can prevent wasted time, product loss, and overall frustration. Congratulations, you just booked your first freelance gig or you're working for a new company. I think before you start, it's important to do your research on the company itself. What is their company culture like? What is their design style? One of the most intimidating interviews that I ever had, I walked into the studio, they walked me right into their, their extras cooler and they asked me, please make an arrangement that is our design style and one that is your design style. So doing your research beforehand will save you a lot of time. Do you have your toolkit ready? It's legally required for a freelancer to have their own tools. It's part of what makes them an independent contractor. So it's good to always have your own tools on hand with some backup mechanics just in case they're needed to save the day. 
Here is an insider's look on what I always carry with me when I'm on site. First and foremost, I always like to have a non-spring loaded pair of shears on me and I usually attach something like a wristband or a lanyard that helps me keep track of them when I'm on site. I also like to carry a small bag on my body at all times, that way I can know my phone, my wallet, my keys, and all of my tools are next to my body. A freelancer is only as good as their floral knife skills. Not only is it way better for your body, because it's more ergonomical, but it also saves you a lot of time because you don't have to pick up and put down your tools. Nothing is better than a good old hardy rose stripper, especially on those big install days. One of the most important pieces of my toolkit is a good pair of gloves. We're very hard on our hands, so it's making sure that we take care of them that's most important. Staple gun, a florist's best friend, am I right? Fishing line has helped me in more ways than I can even let you know. Zip ties, I mean, zip ties. I also found this really cool fancy holder online that has been a game changer for me on site. I always keep a scrap piece of chicken wire with me at all times. You never know when it's gonna come in handy. I can press it down so it's easy to transport. It's always a good idea to keep first aid on first hand. Last but not least is the trusty personals kit, just in case we need to make any adjustments to those bouquets or boutonnieres on site. You can find a full list of what we keep in our personals kit, as well as our on-site bucket of tricks at sweetrootvillage.com. I hope this video has been helpful and you've enjoyed this iteration of Mayesh Design Star. I look forward to seeing you next time and see you live on Mornings with Mayesh.